How's it? How's it? I hope you're having a fantastic Christmas. I came across some images by an Australian photographer called Alan Copy last year that were just like, ah, oh, amazing. They were right up my street. There are compositions that are just absolutely stunning. And I use the word compositions there intentionally because I think what he does with his minimalist approach to photography is a great way of learning about composition. Now, I could sit down and break apart all his images and discuss them at length, but I thought, hang on, why don't I just reach out to Alan and see if we can sit down and find out his approach, his views about how he creates these stunning images. So that's exactly what we did. And I hope you enjoy the results. Alan, welcome to the Photographic Eye. Thank you for, for oh, joining yeah. us. So, so you're, you're a photographer. How long have you been involved in photography? Oh, look, uh, yes, pretty much in my life, actually. When I was, uh, when I was a kid, I uh, took a liking to black and white photography and put up a, um, or built a little dark room in the, the shed out the back of the, uh, yeah. the, my parents' garage. And um, I've sort of been involved in photography most of my life, Alex, yeah. But I, I believe that you ended up, rather than studying than photography, you kind of ended up studying cinematography. Yes, that's correct. Yes, I. Um, well, I, I st after when I was at school, like I, I bombed school. I wasn't a good student. I didn't kind of fit that mould. It wasn't my um, thing. I, I, I never really knew what I was wanting to do. You know, once I left school, and um, I remember I was watching television, and they had a behind the scenes making of a of a, a TV show or making of a film, mm -hmm. and and the sort of the penny dropped, and and so. Uh, when I left school, I went to a college and spent a year studying the basics of, uh, of filmmaking and cinematography was one of the classes that we, we studied. And yeah, from there, I kind of um, had to try and find work and that wasn't very easy, but eventually I um, was able to get some work as, a, as an assistant where I'd, I'd load the film into the magazines. It was all motion picture film back in those days, 16 mil and 35 mil. And yeah, kind of learnt the craft on set, really. Um, yeah. So uh, I didn't, I didn't sort of study too much. It was really the the stuff I studied was pretty basic. We didn't go into the the depth of uh, intellectual filmmaking or or that mm. kind of stuff. But it, that's interesting because obviously I, I'm assuming that you learnt to think more in a kind of like a moving picture sort of sense. You know, a, a frame that kind of moves. How does that? change the way that you uh, as a photographer now have seen the world from say somebody like myself who has a, a, a background in which is purely like a still image do you think that has influenced you at all? oh very much so yes and it's actually the other way around i i think i've always um had an eye for the still image um mm -hmm. and motion picture wasn't a uh as good a fit as photography is for me um and uh, it was really also a career thing like i i I felt um, it would be an interesting way of building a career, but mm. uh, my natural instincts have always been towards a uh, something I could hang on the wall. Mm. It's definitely a gut feeling. I don't I don't have any kind of formulas uh, that I follow. So it's it's a it's a process, you know, and I um, it, it builds. So I don't go into it, um, yeah, with the Fibonacci numbers. You know, which is quite quite interesting. You know, the golden rule. It's it's a very very interesting uh, concept of why and how that works, and why it, the balance and form that are forms that are created within that formula actually work. It is there, but you, you know, you just I I, I, I I can't apply that when I'm out there taking pictures. You know, I don't have a a sort of a, a transparency that I can overlay and. Yeah, I really, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's definitely a gut feeling. Like th this one, um, again, I was very excited. I found out another photography put me on to a guy I follow on Instagram, put me on to this one and thought I've got to go out there because the shapes and the, the, the landscape in which this uh, platform sit in is, is just it has so much graphic appeal. So um, I think those words, graphic appeal, uh, is what I'm looking for. And then it's a matter of finding the composition that that kind of speaks to me and and works with each subject 
its location. Now, one of the things that that kind of leads on to is that when when I look at your photographs, they 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 resonate with me because that's kind of my um, you know my visual sort of leanings. But as as a photographer, what motivates you to to create? So you know, you mentioned about putting something up on the wall. Is is that kind of your motivation? Is is to create something that people would enjoy looking at, or is it something a little bit deeper than that? Oh, it's much deeper. I, I, look, it's an interesting question. I don't always know the answer to why I venture out with a camera. Um, I've always been interested in the visual. So, um, you know, growing up, my family was always very musical, but I, I couldn't play anything. But I'd have a pencil and paper. So I've always been interested. I've always been drawing and, and making imagery. And I, I think when I go out with my camera... Um, I'm trying to find a subject or an environment that satisfies some little trick in the brain that 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 clicks, and um, and so that's what I'm looking for. I'm, when I'm out on locations or if I pick a subject, um, I'll try and find a composition that speaks to me, and that can be different. That's never the same thing. It's it's always an ongoing. Uh, subject, so it's depending on the subject and and where I'm at and 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 if I'm on a location, I'll kind of just walk around, walk around, and and when I feel I'm in a good spot, like angle and height and uh, that kind of thing, and it'll sort of speak to me, and and so it finds me in a way. The uh, the pictures kind of come to me. People talk a lot, especially in in. in some sort of you know, online circles with with photography and try to make it i feel a little bit more highbrow or difficult and and really you know it it does boil down to that idea as you, as you mentioned that it's, it's what you feel yeah look uh, you know for this this image it was uh, even though it's a kind of like a, a a simple looking picture which it is um lens choice was actually quite a a, a challenge not a challenge, but it, it took me a while to work out the lens uh, that I wanted to work with on this image um, and the time of day. And, you know, I had a lot of difficulty capturing this image because, you know, I went there in the evening and I, I, I mucked around with, you know, a different lens and, and then I found the lens and the height, the camera height and that, all that sort of stuff. And, and when the light was just getting to where I wanted it to be, uh, a family sort of walks straight past my tripod and, and goes and, and sort of walks around and sits, you know, right in the middle of the subject. And I'm going, okay, well, you know, it's, I don't know, I haven't, you know, I can't rope it off or anything. So I just sort of waited and waited and waited and, you know, I thought they might have noticed that there was someone there with a tripod and you know, in your way, nah. So, um, you know, I ended up having to, I did a, it's quite a long exposure and um, they were moving a little bit. So they kind of blurred and then I had to, I had to just sort of just remove them <laughs> with Photoshop because by the time I left, it was just, it was too dark. It wasn't working. I mean, the, the stories behind photographs, I, think, I love this because often it is not nearly as like, romantic it's, it's often people think you know no, there's, there's a lot of that's right and look and it did take a while it was even though it looks like it's something that would be relatively easy to photograph i, I didn't struggle with it but it took me a while to to get it working to get to that point <clears throat> yeah when i i look at your work i i see there, there's many influences and I can, see, you know, sort of see like sort of um, sort of abstract photography, and then some straight photography, and then some landscape photography. How do you actually? I mean, or if you even wanted to, would you define your work? Oh, um, look, I, I don't know if I can, Alex. It's like yeah. I think the I, I think the key the key thing for me is feeling, you know, and and you use it in, in your. Um, sentence just before, I think it's finding something that feels right mm -hmm. and and then building on that. So I guess, um, you know, I'm very influenced by minimalist photography. And I think in my photographic career, I walked into a, a bookshop many, many years ago um, and picked up a book by Michael Kenner. And I think that's when everything changed for me because his images really spoke to me 
um, or, and, and as they do with, I guess, mm. his wide, vast audience. But there was something there, something about his captures weren't uh, a human story. They weren't uh, documenting the hu human condition yeah. or anything, but they were about feeling, like the feeling of beauty, simplicity, um, and that really resonated with me and, and kind of projected me on a journey to pick up the camera again and, and not emulate, but try and find what he had found um, mm. with my own photographic work. You, met, you mentioned that word, simplicity. And, and, and I think, you know, when you, when you talk about Michael Kenner, that that's certainly something because because that's the thing they're not landscape photographs but they're not abstract photographs there's that kind of an in between sort of word and i think much of of your photography you know sort of seems to inhabit that environment you know we we live in a world that is extremely busy visually you know lots of things going on you seem to be able to tease out a simple uh you know visually striking image how what, what how does that process work how do you how are you, how are you confronted with this you know does either sydney harbour bridge or, or you know all these kind of things and go this is the, this is the little piece yeah it's good it's a good question alex it's it's interesting and and while you're speaking i had you know multitude of thoughts running through my mind look it's it's about taking things out as as much as anything and reducing the amount of information but I also, I also liken it to architecture in a way, whereas I, I, I could have been a great architect, I think. I love it. I love the way things are designed. And if I think about how an architect works, maybe not so much now, but they would draw. So they'd have a pen and paper and they'd draw a shape and a building, but it would have like on a simple background. So, of course, if you then go ahead and build that building, it doesn't look like that because the building in essence is surrounded by all this noise, trees and cars and people, la, 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 la. So um, somehow that thought is what I'm looking for when I go out to take my photographs is to kind of strip things back and not show the whole world and find the, the shapes or the beauty and the movement um, without seeing everything. So it's, it's, it's quite often a, a process of reduction more than addition. Yeah, that, that sort of the idea of reducing things down to a sort of a simple, simple idea. And there, there is a series on on your website. So it's the you know, the Sydney Opera House, and you know this this is a, a it's an iconic building. You know, it's been photographed millions of times. How do you find how do you find in that something unique? you know, when, when you're confronted with, with something that is so iconic? Yeah, it's a good question. Look, every time I visit the Opera House, it, it just comes at me. And, you know, it's, it's always such, has such a strong presence. I think, again, it was just, for me, this picture is about the symmetry, very much straight lines and this beautiful shape. So, you know, the, the stairs leading up uh, you know, I've got all these beautiful light and shades and it's very horizontal and then you've got the, the shape of the sails and, and it's very much symmetrical. I did take out in the, in the corners, if there were some people there, I had to take them out and um, the edge of, a, of another part of the building. But for me, it was just trying to capture the, uh, the essence of the shape. So I guess the symmetry and the shapes um, is what, ended up being my motivating factor for, you know, that capture. But quite strong's not enough often, is it? And no, you know, no, I mentioned, yeah, I, I mean, I mentioned at the beginning of, of, of the, um, of, of the interview that, you know, you've, you've won a number of awards. Um, you know, I, I saw your work, I think it was in the guardian because of you won some stuff on the minimalist photographer of the year. And, you know, for people who are looking to enter, competition uh, be it minimalist photographer abstract photographer or street or whatever what sort of advice would you give them if they wanted to you know do quite well oh uh, look it's you know for me alex what uh, i think changed things a little bit was um well first find a style you know like what do you like do you, is it is it is it minimalism is it street is it 
you know, urban, the human condition. And then, but what for me, I, I started working in, in series. So I would, instead of just going out there and, and walking around and go, oh, that looks good and mm-hmm. capturing it, I'd, I'd kind of um, try and create a series, a body of work. And that sort of gave me, um, what's the word? Well, it just gave me something to work towards. So mm-hmm. I was kind of like focused on uh, 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 trying to achieve a specific style of imagery and then I would just keep working that. So building a series, I think, helped me a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And, yeah, look, if, if people are wanting to enter awards, I, I think it's good, but I would, I would seriously work hard because there's a lot of people and a lot of photographs that are mm-hmm. being entered in these awards um, and you really want your work to, to speak something about yourself. Because I think that's where the value is, is is try and find what it is in photography that is your message. You know, if you're a songwriter, yeah. you don't want to just write random stuff, although some people do, I don't know. But you kind of want it to, um, yeah. to be a reflection of who you are and how you see the world and how you feel about the world. And I, I think that's where the strength in any art form is, is, is you know, what, what you have to say, what you want to put out there and project so i would think along those lines so so almost like putting the the putting your soul for a better way in, in, into into images i think yeah that that's fantastic advice is that you know it, it's one thing just to create a pretty photograph but if it lacks you it lacks your sort of fingerprints on that image then it, it would just be kind of it won't it's that's, what, that's where the meaning is. You know, I think you want your audience to resonate or you want your images to uh, resonate with your audience. And mm. um, I think you've got to have a little bit of yourself um, projected there, you know, within the imagery. And so um, with my pictures, I think as we discussed, it's simplicity, it's form. There's a lot of noise in this world and I think there's – it's nice to, um, for me, to put images out there that are just beautiful or they have a nice shape and and yeah. people can kind of have a breath, you know, like it's it's not go, 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 you know. There's yeah. something that sort of steps away from your busy world or, mm. it, I don't know, it's got some sort of calming. Um, a calming. Form. I like that. It was, it was, I think we could all use a bit of that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. a calming simplicity so if people wanted to see more of your work uh, i will link to your website in the description box below it a bit um do you have any other places where people can see your work uh, just instagram yeah just instagram okay I'll, I'll link to those as well um do you do you have any folios of your work out there for for sale or anything like that um no i don't have any online um sales i've had exhibitions uh, mm-hmm. And my works have sold quite well. Look, it's a tricky thing. Uh, um, yes, yeah, so no, I haven't gone down the online um, yeah. uh, sales. Uh, it's sort of, I don't want to mass produce my work. So, you know, I'll do a series of, I don't know, five or three or whatever, depending. Um, okay. But I'm not a businessman either. You know, there's a lot of great photographers out there and they, they yeah. have that whole thing really down. Mm-hmm. You know, and, uh, and good on them, you know. I I yeah. just don't have that makeup. It's not in my DNA, unfortunately. So trying to make money out of it is is a bit of a struggle for me. So um, all right. Well, well, if if you happen to walk past a gallery and you see some of Alan Copy's <laughs> images in there, then then go and take a look because I'm sure in in person as well they would look absolutely stunning. So you know, Alan, I have to say thank you ever so much for you know for sharing your thoughts with us for joining me today uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you and to see some of your process and you know your thoughts about the you know the, these these quite simply I, I i feel stunning photographs that that are up here on screen and uh, you know guys if you've enjoyed the work of, of alan let him know in the comments below because it's always, it's always great to to you know to get some feedback um and uh, yeah thanks ever so much for watching and uh, we'll see you again soon